Hello and welcome to Community Conversation, the show that's for and about the people who live in Reading. My name is Kevin Vent. I'm going to be your host for this episode. And my guest today in studio is State Senator Jason Lewis. Nice to have you here today, Jason. Thank you, Kevin. It's good to be back with you. For most of you who you may or may not know who Jason is, uh, he is our state senator in Boston, and he represents Reading and a bunch of other communities uh, in the state Senate down uh, in the state house in Boston. And, and so he's here today to share a little bit about what we're calling the year in review, kind of telling us a little bit about what has gone on uh, in the last year or so uh, in the state Hard House. to believe that uh, here we are at the end of 2015 It is already. hard to believe. And as we're taping this, we're at the end yeah. of 2015. This is actually going to go on the air in 2016, okay. but uh, that's okay because uh, <laughs> it'll still be good for the year in review. Sure. So I know one of the things you did recently is that you hosted a forum at Reading Memorial High School talking about opioid abuse and, mm -hmm. and, and that type of thing and, and how we kind of combat that as a community and as a state. Do you want to share yes. a little bit about that uh, forum? Yes, uh, it, it is the, the issue of uh, uh, opioid abuse and heroin and substance abuse uh, in general uh, is, uh, is, is really uh, a, a crisis in our state and across mm -hmm. our country, in fact. And, uh, you know, I think probably, um, you know, everyone who's, who's watching at home probably know somebody, if, you know, if right. not a, even in their own family, who's been touched by this. Sure. And um, so we're trying to do everything we can at, at the state level at, and at the local level, um, working with our health care providers and uh, law enforcement and mm -hmm. all of the different stakeholders to try to have, um, you know, as, as strong a, a, a response as we can. And it, it, sure. it really involves starting with prevention and then treatment options for a range of care and then support for those who are in recovery as well as right. their families. So right. this forum, which we did at Reading High School, was, uh, was well attended and uh, we were very fortunate to have some terrific speakers, including sure. the um, Secretary of Health and Human Services for Massachusetts, uh, Mary Lou Sutters, mm -hmm. and the Commissioner of the Department of Public Health, which is the state agency right. that really is spearheading our uh, efforts around substance sure. abuse. And uh, we talked about the full range of needs in the community, the progress we're making, and, uh, and really what we still need to do right. to improve our services and, and um, our, our treatment. And, uh, yeah, and there support. always seems to be two sides to this issue because there's the side, of course, of, of treatment and prevention, mm -hmm. uh, but there's also the side of enforcement mm -hmm. uh, of the law, unfortunately, we have to deal with as well. I know the district attorney was at this meeting as well. That's right. What kind of issues are they working on on the, on the enforcement side? Yes, so I think the, and, and District Attorney Marion Ryan was there, yes. and, and I'm glad you mentioned her because she's actually a great example of leadership on, from the law enforcement side, and, and a lot of her work certainly they do do enforcement of drug trafficking, mm -hmm. but also a lot of the work that she's doing out of her office is around education and prevention. Sure. And the, the, I think the most important point is that there is a growing understanding that um, substance abuse is a mental illness. Okay. And, um, and you don't uh, address a mental illness by just th locking people up in, in right. jail. Right. You provide you know, treatment as you would for diabetes or heart disease sure. or sure. anything else. So. That's a very important um, understanding. Mm -hmm. Now that said, there are still people who do very bad things um, right. and, uh, and, and, and trafficking of drugs and, and crimes associated with it, and we right. still have to deal with that as well. In fact, part of the, the state legislature and the governor have been trying to have a, a very comprehensive response. And okay. on the law enforcement side, in fact, it's worth pointing out, we just passed legislation and the governor already signed it to make trafficking in fentanyl a, uh, okay. a felony. Okay. And um, kind of adding to that list. Of, yeah, because of a lot of people substances. may not even have heard of it, but fentanyl is like a hundred times more powerful than heroin or wow. than uh, prescri prescription painkillers. Yeah. And it is used, um, it is essentially uh, drug dealers uh, cut it into heroin. Okay. And it's the, um, and you never know how much fentanyl might be there when right. you, you know, if you ever, if people, if they use heroin. Um, and it's the main cause of the overdoses that oh, we are okay. seeing. I mean, we've had a tremendously uh, a terrible tragedy of the number of overdoses, sure. and fentanyl is often the cause. So mm -hmm. this is important now that we give tools to District Attorney Ryan and mm -hmm. our law enforcement to, to go after those who are um, right. selling uh, um, fentanyl. So when we're thinking of the enforcement mm -hmm. side, of course, we're often thinking of those who are pushing the drugs or selling yes. the drugs or that kind of thing. Yeah. We talk about treatment, we're talking about those who are, are using who are them using. on and the other sometimes end. There's overlap. And sometimes there's overlap. Sometimes right. there's overlap, and then those are complicated cases. Sure. You know. But in general, when someone is just is using, an, uh, addicted to a prescription, painkiller, right. Percocet, you know, heroin, or another substance, 
what we're really trying to do, and you, and you see this even with police departments like sure. the Gloucester Police Department and others that are saying, if you come in, you know, give up your, 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 you know, your, the drugs you drugs have, the paraphernalia, paraphernalia yeah. we will then help you to get into treatment. Okay, good. Um, yeah. And that's, uh, that's really what we're focused on, sure. is making sure that there is treatment available. And, right. and treatment's not simple because it's not just detox services, mm -hmm. it's a whole range of supports that, you mm -hmm. know, because this is a chronic illness. Right. And you don't just get sober in a week or two weeks, it's, right. it takes a long time and you need support through that process and s in step-down services. Sure. But we're, we're doing a lot better. Um, we have passed legislation that improves the insurance coverage okay. for these services. That's already kicked in. And the state senate a few months ago passed legislation focusing more on the prevention side. Okay. For example, we're trying to improve the, mo the prescription monitoring program for keeping track of the prescriptions that are being written right. so we can track if there's certain uh, doctors that maybe sure. are, are abusing the system or certain patients that are doctor shopping right. to get uh, prescriptions and also to do more education and prevention in our schools. Yeah, that's good because I was going to ask mm -hmm. if there was any specific legislation that had come about because mm -hmm. obviously, you know, state government can't prevent these things, but it can right. provide the resources that help uh, right. prevention services that's and that right. kind of thing. So yeah. it's good to hear that, uh, that uh, the state government is at least doing its part in that, it, it, in that and we're certainly and it, and it is absolutely a partnership, you know, with this, the state government and the uh -huh. Department of Public Health and uh, the law enforcement district attorney. And then I must give a shout out to, you know, our CASA. Right. Um, and they and uh, they co-sponsored the forum. And Erica McNamara, who's sure. the director, was one of our speakers as well. And yeah. uh, they do such terrific work in the community, um, you know, bringing together parents, uh, sc uh, school administrators, uh, right. administrators, uh, law enforcement, health care. And that's a critical part of the solution, particularly for our young people, right. is the, right. the local work of the coalition. So really partnering all those things together, mm -hmm. the local coalition, right. the school department, law enforcement, everybody working together that's to, right. to kind of give the same message yes. to people that, uh, yeah. that, uh, you know, that these things need to be dealt with, mm -hmm. they need to be dealt with in an appropriate and proper manner. So, exactly. so it's, it's good. And I thought that was excellent that you uh, hosted that forum. Uh, here a couple of weeks ago, and hopefully, I believe that was videotaped also. Yes, so it should uh, be on the air RCTV at some point. did, and uh, hopefully, for those who were not able to join us that night, you you, you should be able to watch it uh, or online. Right, right. Now I know you're involved several committees also uh, in this in the state senate, mm -hmm. and particularly the the Health and Human Services Committee. Uh, so I do serve on several committees, yeah. um, in including um, education okay. and uh, what's known as children and families. But okay, the committee I spend most of my time on uh, is uh, the public health. Public health. And that's the and one I was thinking. That's because I'm yeah. the chair of that committee. Okay, so, all right. Um, we have about uh, 350 bills wow. uh, before the public health committee. It's it's one of the probably top five committees in terms of number sure. of bills, and sure. that deals with everything from infectious diseases to clean air and water mm -hmm. to um, hospitals and pharmaceutical issues and insurance uh, issues, uh, substances, insurance coverage, yeah. substance abuse. Um, so we. Um, Every single bill that is filed in the legislature, it gets a public hearing. Right. And so we had about 15 public hearings through the course of this year. We, okay. we grouped the bills by issue. Sure, okay. And, um, and the public, members of the public from Reading, from anywhere, can come and testify on the bills, right. uh, whether they are for it or against it or what, what yeah. have you. So we've finished all the hearings now. And uh, now the heavy lifting is to uh, evaluate all the legislation sure. based on what we heard and talking to experts. And then the committee is required to give a, a report on each bill, okay. essentially a thumbs up or a thumbs right, down. Right. And a thumbs down, it's probably not going to go any further. Thumbs up, it moves on in the legislative Into process, okay. uh, and then it's, uh, it continues on its journey. So 350 bills are filed, but you really ha only had hearings on a few of them. Is it? Because no, we've heard hearings on all of oh, them. Oh, you had now, hearings on all of them. Okay. But we haven't yet uh, acted on. We've, oh, I we've see. We've acted on some of the bills. Okay. Um, but there's many more that the sure. committee needs to. There must be some overlap, work. though. You know, so. I would assume that some people have the same idea or yes. similar ideas. Yes. You know, and so there's some overlap there. They're any, not all completely unique. Right, yes, right. That's any right. any bills that stand out that uh, that the committee will be recommending um, to the legislature to, to yes, talk about? Yes, we've already. Uh, s there are several bills, in fact, that we have already recommended favorably. Okay. Um, there is legislation. Um, one of the concerns in a public health in our state, less so in our area, but in some parts of the state, is dental access. Hmm. We have um, many uh, adults, and, and actually almost half of the children, this is hard for many people to believe, who, are not, who do not regularly get dental care. Okay, wow, um, I, 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 I was aware to, of that. You're yeah. supposed to get dental care every, every six, six months. months yeah. And um, there are a very large number of our residents, generally lower income, 
or minorities or in more rural parts of the state who right. do not have that. And part of the challenge is that um, there are not enough, um, not just dentists, but um, um, dental therapists and dental okay. hygienists. And, and so even oral surgeons. And and exactly. Kind of thing, yeah. So this legislation that we've already passed to, out of the committee would establish a new, pos a new type of role, what would be called a dental therapist. And this would be a, an individual who could do, um, you know, just general basic cleaning care, of your yeah. teeth, but, but it could also fill cavities okay. and could do some of the basic uh, dental care, not root canal, right. <laughs> um, and would work mm -hmm. under the supervision of a dentist. But it, it's been proven in other states to be okay. very effective in expanding access to care. Interesting. So that's an example of a bill. Yeah. We had a hearing. Um, we had a lot of testimony. We think it's a really important issue. Sure. And so that's one of the bills we've, uh, you know, we've acted on favorably. So that will go on to the legislature, and the legislature will figure out what tweaks it wants to make. Exactly, and, 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 kind of and there's no guarantees it will pass into law. Right, uh, you right. know, it, uh, it'll move on. Another important issue that we're working on in the committee it deals with uh, tobacco. Mm. Um, Reading has actually uh, done a lot to in, uh, prevent youth uh, use right. of tobacco. Right. For example, by raising the age from 18 to 21. Sure. And uh, Boston's actually just done yeah, this. Yeah, I as saw well. that. I saw that. That's this morning right. In Boston so that, that's yeah. legislation we have under review to potentially be that statewide. Okay. Um, and to have a, a consistent uh, tobacco age of 21, same as alcohol. Sure. sure. And that's been shown to be very effective in um, reducing youth uh, use of tobacco okay. products, including e-cigarettes, which is a, right. a new product that unfortunately is so we're seeing it in a lot of our high schools. Hmm, interesting. Well, we need to take a short break here, uh, but it's been interesting talking with you about some of the public service, uh, public health uh, stuff that has been going on in the State House. Uh, we will be back here on Community Conversation in just one moment. The only thing you can really do at the end of the day is compare a guy to his contemporaries. Right. It's hard to compare Brady to Terry Bradshaw. The game was different in the 70s than it is now. They've won something like 15 or 16 more games than any other team in the NFL yep. in that span of time. Luck looks like an NFL quarterback. Um, I remember I called everyone I knew when they, when they uh, traded for Garnett. Um, that was just one of the most amazing things <laughs> of my life. Really. <laughs> if John Farrell could fix John Lester, then your pitching problem is partially solved. Kareem had that one unstoppable shot, the sky hook, and he milked it for, what, 35,000 points <laughs> or something like that. Just, again, versatility, Mr. Patriot. Yeah. If you needed something, he's going to get it done. I am to this show as Alec Baldwin is to SNL. So. <laughs> this is the infamous Jason Barrett that shoves uh, his glove yes. right into Alex Rodriguez's face. <laughs> Well, hello, and welcome back here to Community Conversation on RCTV. My name is Kevin Vent, and I've been talking with Senator Jason Lewis, and we've been talking about kind of the year in review as to what's gone on in the state Senate and really in the whole legislature uh, down in Boston this year. We were talking about public health services in the first half of the program. We're going to shift gears a little bit. I know there's a lot of interest right now because of uh, what the President and the Secretary of State have been working on and worked on with the Paris mm -hmm. deal with climate change and, mm -hmm. and uh, different kinds of environmental concerns. And I know, understand that uh, a bill was just passed for Massachusetts in regards to that and things that have been happening there. Yes, that's exactly right. It's, uh, 
you know, this is a huge challenge for all of us, uh, sure. climate change and rising sea levels and impact on our uh, on, on, on weather patterns right. and, and droughts and, and so on. Massachusetts has actually been a leader, really, along with California, in terms of encouraging renewable energy. Sure. Uh, we've been encouraging solar, mm -hmm. and some wind, and hopefully offshore wind in the future. Right. And uh, we've also been done, we're actually the leading state when it comes to energy efficiency. We've done a really good job there. Mm -hmm. But we know we've got more to do. We're also starting to recognize that even with the Paris Agreement, and hopefully if countries you know, step up right. to their commitments to reduce carbon emissions, you know, we can't stop the, the warming that is already right. going uh, taking yeah. place or will take sure. place in the next several decades. So we know we will still see impacts of climate change like rising sea levels. Yeah. Boston and a number of our coastal communities are going to be impacted sure. as well as inland areas. So the legislation we passed, I think it's the first of its kind in the country, it really will set up a climate um, adaptation plan for the state. Okay. So thinking about what will be the effects of climate change on Massachusetts, let's figure out all the effects. Sure. Then let's figure out what we need to do to be prepared. Okay. And then the legislation also includes some grant money so we can start doing some things, particularly to get ready mm -hmm. for flooding. And um, so right. it's a start. Yeah. Um, and uh, that legislation now will go to the House of Representatives. Okay. But I'm hopeful that will make it through because I think you have to now think about climate change in terms of both reducing carbon emissions and, and hopefully preventing the worst impacts, but sure. we also have to start preparing to adapt as well. Sure, sure. And uh, you know, I think it's important to recognize even in Massachusetts, just this one little tiny section of the world, mm -hmm. you know, if every little tiny section does its piece, mm -hmm. then, um, then we can possibly help yes. make some kind of change there. Well, and I actually think the reason we got to an agreement in Paris, which is a huge accomplishment, was mm -hmm. because of the work of individual communities. Sure. Because we, you know, that's where the leadership has been. Right coming from right. cities and towns and they've been the ones stepping forward and yeah. eventually got all the way up to yeah. an international agreement. Yeah, another issue that this legislature has been wrestle, wrestling, wrestling with is uh, social media and kind of protection of identity mm -hmm. and those kind of things. So what, yeah. what's been happening there with that? Yes, yeah, so um, you know, everybody's on social media right. now, um, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or other things. And one of the concerns that's arisen as a, a result of that is your personal privacy. Right. There have been cases where either colleges or employers have asked that as a requirement for um, either employment or acceptance or school uh -huh. that you um, friend the, that right. institution right. or that you share your password right. so that they can go and see your, per, your social media. Sure. And uh, we believe that, or I believe at least, and many of my colleagues do, that you should be able to put boundaries around that and you should right. be able to you know, protect your own privacy and you shouldn't be forced to share that information. Sure, sure. So we did just pass legislation in the Senate that would essentially prevent em either employers mm -hmm. or schools from mandating, requiring that you share your password and your right. username. There would be ex exceptional circumstances, uh, for example, in the um, you know, case of law enforcement and right. in cases like that, but otherwise you would be protected. Sure. I want to ask a question about mm -hmm. that, uh, just because it kind of interests me a little bit. You know, I, I think what probably one of the things that people might say is, is if I'm an organization, I want to protect my public image. Mm -hmm. And so I, to help protect my public image, I have to kind of be able to see mm -hmm. what my employees or someone I'm potentially hiring mm -hmm. might be doing on, on mm -hmm. social media. How do you kind of respond to that? Well, I think it's it's a reasonable it's a reasonable point. Um, you know, I think it's it, it 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 we we would not it's you know as an employer we wouldn't say that they could go into my home and right. see you know what right. what I what I have in my home sure. or what I'm keeping in my car. Right. You know or what I do on my own time. Mm -hmm. You know, outside of work. I mean, that's my private time, and that sure. we we would all understand. So, you know, I think it's analogous what we do online is our own time. Now that said, if you know if I'm doing something online that is, um, y you know, that is um, uh, putting my employer uh, right. in a bad light, sure. um, you know, then that's going to get out there publicly, right. I think, right. you know, and then if that comes back to the employer, then that, that could be just like any other behavior that, mm -hmm. if, that if I undertake that behavior and it's, uh, you know, um, 
you know, yeah, it looks poorly on looks the, poorly on, on my on employer my or, or whatever. That you know, then then I think it would be treated the same way any right. behavior sure, would. Sure. That um, you know, it doesn't have to be online to, sure. to do something. You, you know, hear stories of people yeah. posting they hate their boss or their yeah. you know, or, you you know, know they hate the where they their company or something like right. that. And next and thing you know, they don't have a job, so they don't have to worry about right. it. Right, but that's you know, that should be as if I just say that, right. um, you know, as a uh, and and that and and you know, treat it the same way. So I sure. think there's ways to handle that in those reasonable circumstances, but. What we want to do is, in general, you know, you should be able to have some boundaries and sure. some privacy. Well, I like your I like your uh, um, example of the private home. Mm -hmm. You know, you wouldn't expect an employer to be mm -hmm. able to come into your private home and mm -hmm. see what how your decorating is or something like that. Right. So, right. kind of treating that social media mm -hmm. presence similar to mm -hmm. your private home and, and, yeah. and looking at it that way. Um, so that that's I think that's good to hear and, and how how the state legislature is looking kind of forward looking a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, on those kind of things. Um, other types of things that you might want to uh, share about what's gone on in this past year? Yeah, well, a um, couple things, uh, well, uh, something that we made progress on this year and then will fold into next year is uh, work that I've been doing for, for some time now to really um, strengthen and update our school funding formula. Okay. Um, so our public schools, K through 12, mm -hmm. are funded under a formula known as Chapter 70. Right. I've spoken about this before. Sure. One of the problems is that formula is 20 years old, and a lot has changed sure. with uh, you know technology and the special, special needs and, and, and yeah. uh, health care costs. Right. So I had filed legislation um, that was uh, added to a state budget la a year, two years ago okay. that created a, a special commission to look at the formula, and they finished their work this year, and that right. was a bipartisan formula uh, commission. It had all uh, stakeholders from you know teachers to administrators mm -hmm. to business people, legislators, and they in fact did find that that formula is badly in need of being updated, particularly because of health care and special needs. Okay. So that was a very important findings and recommendations. And sure. so going into next year, I'm going to be working hard with others to start to work to implement those recommendations. Okay. And the the net result, if we're successful, is it will mean that the state would be responsible for providing uh, additional funding to our public schools mm -hmm. to help cover some of these costs that okay. are not uh, that our schools, including in Reading, are struggling to sure. provide today. Sure. So that's um, that's something we start. We've been working on for a while, and we'll, we'll continue to push hard on uh, next year. Yeah, and that's good to hear because I know that, that there has been issue with the mm -hmm. formula being old and. In right. kind of looking at an old school method of education in terms of the uh, acquisition of state funds, and that's it's good right. to hear that that's being updated and kind of polished off yes, a little bit. Yes, so and we've definitely got some more work to do there, but it's a high priority for for me and for some of my colleagues. Right. Another issue that I'm working on relates to improving government transparency. Hmm, One okay. of the things I think is very important is 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 having uh, a transparent government is really essential to a, a well-functioning sure, democracy. Sure. And one of the keys to transparency is that people have access to public records. And these okay. could be either in the state government or in municipal governments. Right. Um, not everything's available because some information is confidential sure. and private, but a lot of information is should be readily available mm -hmm. to the public and mm -hmm. to the media. So I filed legislation that would update the public records law. For example, if something is in available electronically, Right. It should be provided electronically. You, okay. know, you should be able to do that and search it. Sure. Also, to make sure that when fees are charged, that those fees aren't excessive um, okay. for providing that information, mm -hmm. and um, and some additional uh, uh, provisions to improve the enforcement. So that's a law that the Senate, a, a bill that the Senate's going to take up early next year. All right. And I'm working with the uh, our Ways and Means Committee to refine that uh, legislation so it'll be ready for the Senate floor. Interesting, because that's. A be honest with you, an issue I'd never really thought about before, but it does make a lot of sense that, you know, like you said, if, if mm -hmm. records are electronic, they should be searchable. Mm -hmm. That seems yeah. logical, of course, right. but, uh, you know, but sometimes in an institution as large as a state, or, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's difficult to have that transition. Yeah, come and about. unfortunately, this is an area. Massachusetts, you know, we're a leader in health care, and notwithstanding the Chapter 70 formula, right. we're <laughs> a leader in education and, and clean energy. Right. We're a real laggard, unfortunately, when it comes to. Um, uh, public records. Really, um, really, there's a lot of other states that are much better in complying and making information available to sure. the public, complying with requests in a timely fashion. Okay. And Massachusetts, the law dates back to 1973, right. and wow. uh, hasn't been updated in a long time. And so obviously, the uh, way we disperse information has changed 
drastically since 1973. Absolutely. So it's good to hear that that's, that's uh, updating. Uh, so that uh, um, should be uh, coming up um, on deck for early next year. Good. Anything else as we look forward into next year as we wind up today? Oh, one that may be of interest to our viewers. Uh, we, you know, we're all aware of this issue, which is uh, using cell phones while we're driving. Oh, yes, yes. And unfortunately, <laughs> uh, many of us uh, d uh, do it, and uh, we know we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a law already that bans uh, the use the of texting, texting while sure. you're driving. But the problem is it's very hard to enforce that because, you know, police officers never really know what you're right, doing. Right. So there is a momentum right now underway on Beacon Hill to pass uh, legislation that would basically mean you could only use any kind of cell phone or electronic device hands-free. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, so, you know, you wouldn't be able to text or email right. or read email. Right. You could make calls, but it would have to be have like to using be Bluetooth and hands-free. Sure. So I think that uh, that's likely, uh, we will likely see that um, also in the first few months of next And that's year. really a public safety concern. We've, yes, we've all is. seen the statistics about, you mm -hmm. know, people who are distracted because mm -hmm. they're using their phone in some way and then suddenly right. look up and there's an accident or that kind of thing. Distracted and driving uh, is, a big, is a big public safety. And sure. There's a lot of studies that show that, uh, you know, using a device while you're driving is just as dangerous as driving drunk. Wow. And yeah. of course, we take driving drunk very, very seriously. seriously. So this bill would really help the enforcement mm -hmm. of that because it's a, you know basically if a law enforcement officer sees you on your phone, yes, sees you with a device in your in hand, your hand that, that would you would be you would be breaking the law. So yeah. you know not going to send you to jail, but it will be a civil, some kind of fine, a civil or, fine, yeah. a, a civil fine, right? Uh, like a speeding ticket. Sure, sure. Well, I think that makes sense, mm -hmm. and I think that I'm glad to hear that the legislature is taking some of those public mm -hmm. safety concerns. Seriously, we just have about a minute left, so I just want to give you a chance. Anything else you want to let us know about in our last minute or here? Well, um, we started out with talking about our community conversations, yes. and the latest one was the forum here in Reading on the opioid crisis. Right. Um, we did several others this year on, for example, public transportation, right. on um, the Olympics, when we oh, were still uh, thinking yeah. about having still an Olympics, Olympics, which, uh, yeah. of course, that's dead. <laughs> but I do want to give a quick uh, preview for next year. Okay, good. Our next two, uh, which we are working on, the will be the first will be on issues dealing with our elders okay. um, so issues like Alzheimer's and mm -hmm. dementia and um, housing and transportation needs because okay. our population is aging yeah long-term care we're gonna have the Secretary of, of Elder Affairs for Massachusetts um, okay. Secretary Good. Bono will be our guest speaker oh, so okay. that's coming up uh, in the new year and then we're also working on a, a community conversation looking at the challenges faced by our small businesses okay. and our downtowns Oh, um, right. You know, we want to really encourage uh, local economic development and downtown sure. redevelopment around our small businesses. So that's uh, something else to look forward uh, to. You know, next both year. of those issues extremely apropos for Reading, I know. But uh, both indeed. of those are issues that Reading mm -hmm. has been talking about, uh, very ser taking very seriously and talking about right. uh, as a town and broadening that for uh, community and state input as well. Well, thank you for joining us here today, uh, Senator My Lewis, pleasure. and uh, kind of giving us a, a year in review as to what's <laughs> been going on. Uh, in our state legislature. And I'd like to thank you for watching Community Conversation here on RCTV. My guest has been Senator Jason Lewis, and we have been going over a year in review. Thank you for watching, and be sure to look for one of our future episodes. Have a great day.